Look, it looks crooked to me. Why does it look crooked? Whatever. Okay, I like that you can see the lights. Should I make them more pink or just leave it? Let's leave it. This is my first time filming in the beauty room, so I'm really excited to see what you guys think of this background. I feel like it's just like so girly and cute, and I'm so excited. My face is still a little bit puffy, but I've been able to put some makeup on, so I feel like I hit it really well. So I asked on Instagram for a couple of Q&A questions, and I just haven't done a Q&A in a really long time. I think the last time I did one was maybe like when I was still living in Iowa, like Vlogmas or something like that. I just wanted to give kind of like a little bit of a life update, do a q and A. I I really haven't been doing much like meal prep, workout content, obviously, because of my surgery. So I kind of just have to work with what I got. So let's just get on into the q and I'm gonna answer your guys' questions that I screenshotted. Let's get into it. First of all, everyone kept asking about Surgeon Daddy, and I just think that is so funny. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I made a video of my surgery, and somebody just decided to call the surgeon who did my surgery, Surgeon Daddy, and everyone has just been calling him that, and I think it is literally the funniest thing ever because he is like, he's just like so wholesome and nerdy and smart and adorable and like everyone just keeps calling him Surgeon Daddy. Someone said, how does Surgeon Daddy feel about his nickname? We love him for taking care of you. I think he's honestly flattered, I'm not gonna lie. Like I think he likes it low key because he just like is so sweet and he deserves the recognition. He was a great surgeon. For those that asked that in this q and A, I I did go to Finn Plastic Surgery in Chapel Hill and Dr. Souter was my surgeon. So highly recommend if you're in the triangle area. A lot of app questions on here, which is kind of interesting. Someone said, with your app, do you, do we have communication with you or is it just workouts? And no, you have open communication with me. So I will show you a little screen recording up here on the screen so you can see, like you can go in and message me if you have questions about workouts or you just kind of want to like talk about something, you can message me at all times in the app, which is pretty cool, but it is like unlimited workouts. You have programs and workouts and recipe eBooks and grocery lists and all kinds of things. There's, there's a lot in there. And you know what's really cool about though? And I think this is where it's really worth it is you get unlimited access to anybody else that's on the playbook app. So it's not like just me. Let's say you do like all my programs and there's like 400 workouts on there. Let's say you just like finished whatever and you wanted to go browse someone else's, you can just go into the homepage and search and you can find bajillion programs. So I personally, I think that alone is worth it. Someone asked how uh, important is dedicated mobility work or even warm ups. I think this is one of those things that gets more important the older that we get. I just know for me personally, it was like my late 20s, I just could no longer just like hop into a CrossFit class like I used to be able to. And so I feel like if you have the time and the resources doing dedicated mobility work every day if possible would be ideal, especially pre-workout. But if you can't do that, like at nighttime when you're watching TV or just like hanging out, try to just hang out in some stretches, like some yoga poses. And I mean, I really wish that I spent more time doing that in my early 20s because I think I probably would have been injured less, honestly. Which ear piercing looks cool without being a complete pain to heal? Um, Maybe the conch, this inner one here, this like big diamond looking guy in the center of my ear. I'd say that one wasn't too bad. Oh, hello, Bailey. You joining us for this for this video? I think that otherwise, but you, the only thing about those or like even the tragus is that you can't really wear like AirPods. So if you're an AirPod girly, I would say just a regular Helix. What's one skill you've always wanted to learn? Um, to not be anxious, does that count? <laughs> that I want to learn. I tried to play guitar. I like, I feel if when you're in theater, I feel like you're either a piano or guitar person and I just was always a piano person. Guitar just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I tried, but I'm just not very good at it. I, I can't, I, I don't know, it's just not my thing. So I say guitar and like coding. I think coding is really cool and I would like to understand more about that, but I have no idea. Your bleph recovery different from normal since it was for filler excision. So yes and no. If you didn't see my previous like chatty get ready with me video, I talked a little bit about like the reason why I was getting surgery and I did do a full in-depth video on that on TikTok. So if you haven't seen that, check out my TikTok. But I think that actually my recovery is a little bit longer because of the trauma and damage that I had to my left eye in particular. Even he told me when he was in, in there, he was like, oh yeah, and he found the filler and he's like, okay, I got it, I got it, got it all out. Um, but then he said that my tissue on the left side was very 
very inflamed and it was actually hard to cut through, which is like so gnarly. I, I just, I look back and I'm like, how the hell did I do that awake? But I digress. I said that I will likely have a longer healing process for just this eye in general because it was so inflamed and damaged. But in terms of like activity for, you know, like no working out, no straining, things like that, it's pretty much the exact same as a regular blepharoplasty. I had a week of doing absolutely nothing, which was horrific. And then another week of like only walking or like no straining. And so this upcoming Monday today, when you guys are seeing this video is two weeks post-op. And I feel like I'm healing really well well, I got the V-beam laser. He gave it to me for free to help my bruising because he did say that I was significantly darker than he would have liked because I was awake during surgery. So he did a lot of V-beam laser underneath my eyes, which helps the bruising and redness and all that. So I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm allowed to work out tomorrow, but I just have to be careful, listen to my body. Like I can't, you know, if I start to feel it pulsing or something like that, obviously I'm not doing that. So it's pretty much the same to answer your question, but I think mine will probably be longer just because of how damaged my under eye skin was. How are you feeling after going to strength training, after CrossFit, debating on switching things up? So I feel like there's really good times to do each like thing. And I like to kind of do my year as phases. And I think when I'm in a bulking phase, which I'm gonna be entering again soon, just because I feel like I need to build that strength back up and I wanna just get stronger and have more muscle. I think doing strictly hypertrophy and strength, like following a squat program, doing the accessories and really limiting cardio is so important because while you can build muscle doing CrossFit and things like that, it's just, you're just like fighting two ends of the spectrum. You know, like when you want to get leaner and you want to burn more calories, we obviously will up your cardio and up your high intensity interval training. And then when you're trying to get stronger and build muscle, we're upping the strength training, we're upping the accessory, and usually you lower the cardio. So finding that balance when you're doing CrossFit, I personally feel is pretty challenging. And I think that just for me, having just strictly strength and hypertrophy training for my growing phases has been really, really helpful for me. And then it allows me to be able to cut more easily when I do want to lose a couple of pounds after the strength cycle, I can just add in some CrossFit workouts and it's pretty easy, you know? Do you think that social media encouraged you to get the un original under eye filler? Yes, 100%. I have talked about this so many times and it is such a strange world that we live in because I, prior to having my life on social media, and before anyone comes to me like, I know I do it to myself. I put my life out there, so I'm gonna get the things that come along with it. Totally understand. However, I didn't look at myself the way that I did after the hate blogs and like the comments about my appearance. Like prior to that, I didn't think like, oh, I had really sunken in eyes or like, I mean, I, I knew just like genetically they were, but I wasn't like, oh, I hate them, or like I'm insecure. And then same with my lips or my skin, like my round face. I didn't even feel like it was as round as it was until people called me like round face manders or like SpongeBob square body, whatever the fuck. Like I became then really insecure about those things and then started doing things to change my appearance. And to be honest with you, when I moved to Iowa, I would say, so like I was, th I moved there originally in February, I think. And then by the fall of that year, I feel like I was so insane with the beauty treatments and the lasers and you know, Botox and filler and just like so much. I mean, I remember going into the like med spa and had my face up on like the iPad thing, like, you know, the before and afters and like zooming in and over analyzing every single thing and be like, okay, no, I, I need to fix this. I need to fix this. And like before that, I just didn't do that. And I think that's really sad because that just changed me a lot. And my self-confidence just like plummeted. It really did. I think I, I did a lot of it to myself by reading those things. And I wish I didn't because I think it really, really just put me in a dark space mentally. I think that was really hard for me to kind of like pull myself out of. And now I think I just in general am a more confident person. And so I don't feel like those hate comments get to me as much. But like the thing with my under eyes was obviously like a complication that I was trying to fix from that. But it's crazy because the original under eye filler was what caused this issue. So yeah, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, I do feel like social media 
inspired all of that change and insecurity in me, unfortunately. What do you do to make your eyebrows look so full and dark? Okay, I get a lot of questions on these bad boys. And let me tell you something, I laminate them and dye them myself at home. And I did do this routine on TikTok. So make sure you're checking out my TikTok because I post like random things there, you know, like things that, things that don't make it to the tube. And I have a lamination kit, a tint kit, and then I will like brow gel them up so that they're a little bit more thick. I just naturally don't have thick brows. And I use, right now I'm using the Anastasia brow pen to kind of like draw in little individual hair strokes and make them look thicker. But I personally use like dark, dark brown and a little bit of black. I mix them together to do the tinting on my brows because I personally love a good dark, thick brow. Do you feel like you would have been able to accomplish as much as you have and grow into the person you are now if you had stayed in Florida? Absolutely not. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. Like, holy shit. I, so I went to make a transformation video on Instagram of just like my fitness journey. And I came across some old videos from Florida. And I was like, who is that? That's not me. And I look back, you know, like from when I was 20, like early 20s to now I'm 30. I'm like, holy shit. Like that. I don't even know who that bitch was. And I just feel like knowing the people that I was around, the job that I was in, the environment, I, I hope that I would have been strong enough to like realize that wasn't for me, just like I, I was in Iowa. But like, I, I feel like it would have been similar. I feel like I probably would have conformed quite a bit and tried my best to like people please as I'd be doing. But then I think I would have been like, oh hell no, this is not for me and I would have escaped. So it's just funny because, you know, I, I escaped Florida thinking that I was gonna have like a fresh perspective and a fresh environment that was different from Florida in the Midwest because it was like geographically so different. But when it came to politics and morals and, and just, you know, things like that, it was pretty much the same, if not worse. At least in Florida, I feel like where I was, there was a good mix. It was pretty diverse. And in where I lived in Iowa, that was absolutely not the case. But I will say being around that type of extreme conservative, like, you know, religious Republican environment, it made me so incredibly sure of who I was that I was like, I cannot be happy in this environment. And and so I think Florida would have been similar, but I'm really happy that I experienced that because when I lived in Florida, because I was really heavy into the CrossFit scene and I had just a wide variety of friends, I don't think that I would have experienced that like super intense religious, you know, right wing conservativeness. I just don't think I would have, maybe, I don't know, but I definitely am so grateful for both of those opportunities because I just, I, wow, I learned a lot about myself. <laughs> How do you get uh, inspiration for home decor or are you just a boss bitch? <laughs> Pinterest, dude, check Pinterest. I swear to God, Pinterest has the best stuff. I think that I have a little bit of like an eclectic boho-ish vibe, I would say. I like a lot of colors. I like, um, I do like kind of modern though. I think it's like modern boho. It's not full boho, but. Yeah, I don't know, you gotta find your style. Once you find your style, everything else becomes super easy. Did Dahlia's mom keep her new name? Yes, if you have not been following, Dahlia got adopted by a Snooters fam member, and I love that, her name's Aaliyah, and she did keep her name Dahlia, which I'm so happy about because I think it just, I think it suited her. Is it possible to get healthier and or fitter without tracking food? You know, I think it depends on the person. I think if you are somebody who really struggles with food and you over consume and it's just been your lifestyle for so long, I think not tracking would be not the best choice for you just because you have to have some type of idea as to what you are currently eating and how to eat a little bit less of that. Oh man, I don't know. I would say like, yes, it definitely can be. Like I, de I don't wanna track macros forever, but I do think that it serves a really important purpose for people, you know, when they need to figure out how to lose weight or figure out what they're eating. You know what I mean? I just, I think it really helps people understand their baseline and helps people understand what they need to eat more of or less of in order to lose weight. Favorite meals you've been cooking recently? I have not, listen, I have not been meal prepping. I've been so off my game these last couple of weeks. Like I feel like January was such a wash for me. You know, everyone's always like, oh my God, new me, new year, new me. No, it was the opposite. I started off the year with the surgery, with the move, being sick. I was so sick before the surgery. And I just now I'm starting to finally like not have congestion. So 
I don't know. I feel like <laughs> salads. <laughs> it's really what I've been eating a lot of is salads recently. So hopefully this upcoming week, I'll be able to get back into my routine, starting with working out. I'm so happy to be back into working out tomorrow. You have no idea. And just kind of like setting some goals for myself and like just getting back to normal. Everyone always asks this question, which tattoo hurt the worst? So I have a couple of different things about this. My sternum tattoo was actually way more painful than I expected it to be. And it felt like she was literally tattooing my nipples. Like I remember like looking down and being like, is she on my nipples? Like what is happening because of the nerves? That was a very sensitive area and I did not enjoy that one. However, the number one worst spot for me personally to get tattooed was my kneecap. I did not use any numbing for that. And I regret that <laughs> so bad. And the worst part about that in particular is that your kneecap swells up so much. So I could barely walk on it. I could barely do anything for like a whole week. That one was so painful. And then also randomly the back of my neck, I have a pretty large mandala on the back of my neck and the needle being like on the base of my skull and my spine was really strangely painful for me like I didn't expect it to be so like kudos to anyone who ever gets their like heads tattoo that shit's wild I could never what's one goal that you want to accomplish this year okay I'm gonna end it with this one because this video is getting long and I, I think this is a great question I have a goal to compete in boxing this year I would love to at the end of the year I think it would be so fun and just challenge myself in something different because this is a whole entire new sport for me and I'm really excited to learn something new so I think that would be my number one goal and if I can't do that and I'm like not ready I think then like the subcategory goal of that would be to have as much improvement in boxing this year than I like more than I did last year and last year I only started around the summertime so I want to like really have a full year of super super solid training for boxing and then hopefully in the future compete so anyway thank you for the fun questions let me know what you think about this new background if you like it and give me some video suggestions like can you just realize for one moment that I have been doing I mean back in the day back in like 2016 I used to do two videos a week Monday and Wednesdays, Mondays and Thursdays. I don't remember. And I couldn't keep up with it because I was running out of content. And like, I realized I have been doing one video a week for the last five years, okay? Like I've, I've never missed a week. Yet I still don't have 100,000 subscribers and I'm also running out of content. So I would love to get some new ideas. I think that would be amazing. I would love to have you know, some fresh perspectives and things to talk about. And I kind of like haven't been talking about fitness and health and, and food lately. So like if you have any specific topics that you think I could do, I would love to know. So let me know. But that is a wrap for this Q&A video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe. And I'll see you next week for Monday with Manders. Hopefully something more exciting. <laughs>